Hi there, BookTube. My name is Nathan, and I am the Rambling Reviewer. I call myself that because, well, I tend to ramble in these videos, and well, in, th in these videos, I sometimes review things. And as you might be able to tell from this stack of books to the side, no, this is not a haul video. This is, in fact, however, a TBR video, but one, that's a, but one that's a little bit different from my usual TBRs, because this is not a... Uh, a monthly TBR. Instead, of, it's kind of a, uh, a list of propositions, uh, books that I want, that I am interested in reading in the new year, um, or beyond, but that I'm hoping to get done in the new year. Kind of a continuation of New Worlds November, which luckily is actually continuing through the New Worlds SF Book Club. However, as far as I know, none of these books uh, are part of that. Um, part of that book club. I don't actually know, but probably not. Um, not all the books I want to talk about are right here. A few of them are books that I don't own. Well, actually, only two of them are books that I don't own. Uh, but they're still books that I really do want to read. I think I'll start off with those ones. Uh, first of all, I'm there's at least two major kind of genre-defining works, kind of the best of works in science fiction that I'm hoping to read in the new year. One of them is The Book of the New Sun by Gene Wolfe. Uh, I have not read any of Gene Wolfe. Um, I don't really have much to say on that one, aside from the fact that it is a huge, huge uh, kind of pivotal work in the genre. A blending of science fiction and fantasy that I really do very much want to read. The other one I do have a little bit more to say about, and that is the Hyperion Cantos, uh, which is Sean D. Stanfast's our residential uh, science fiction sage. It is his favorite work of science fiction. Um, and the work that I've wanted to read for a bit that I've never gotten into. So I'm hoping in the new year I'll be able to get to it. I have read some Dan Simmons. I have read The Terror. I read that last year in uh, October. And I absolutely loved The Terror. It's one of my favorite horror books I've ever read. And I've got several more of his uh, stuff right down there. I can't say you can actually see it. And you can't see it that way. But it's a, a caring comfort. I've got... Uh, Dead of Summer... No, Summer, Summer of Night, and I also have uh, The Abominable by him. So hopefully in the new year in general I can just read more Dan Simmons as is. But that's the only two books that I don't have here. The rest I all have in my collection. They're books I've bought and never read, which is way too many of my books. Uh, but I'm going to go into them. First, I've got uh, The Dark Forest by Sixin Luwu, or Sixin Luwu, how you pronounce his name. This is a continuation of the, uh, what is I don't actually remember. Remember the first past, there we go. Uh, his trilogy of books that started with the Free Body Problem, which I read. Um, back in 2016 or 2017, I think. And really enjoyed. And uh, recently I bought all three of the books. And I actually ended up getting rid of the first one because I sent it to a friend who was interested in it. Someone who doesn't really read all that much, but who is uh, studying to become an astronomer. Um, and she seemed to be really interested in that book, and so I sent it to her. But I still have. My copy of the Dark Forest and of the uh, Death's End. Uh, I couldn't remember the last, the, set, the third book, by apologies. But I am hoping to continue this, this series in the new year. I probably will reread uh, Child, no, not Child's End, uh, The Free Body Problem, however, before, before I get to that. And uh, my eager novels over here aren't the best 
I got stacks of books around me and I'm trying to set them in good ways. Second work is Revelation in Space. Again, a huge work in, the, in this, uh, in the, uh, in modern science fiction. Uh, there's, there's a lot of stuff I haven't read in science fiction. New World November has been kind of a, uh, a, uh, an open door experience for me, I guess. I have read a work in this universe. I've read uh, Diamond Dogs Turquoise Days, which we're doing a buddy read of that. Well, group buddy read with uh, with Matt Defoe and Gray at, oh, at another bibliophile reads, and uh, oh, Matt's at uh, science fiction reads, by the way, and Brandy at the Booklectic. And I think Garrus at Book Songs and Other Magic is in there too. And Scott at the Bookish Bryants. But uh, I've never read the original book in the series, so high time I do. I'm also hoping to read the Uplift Saga. Uh, which I don't actually have all of the books here. I believe this is the, uh, the second and the third book in the series. Um, yeah, it's Star Tide Rising, The Uplift War, and I believe there's one other book before it. Is it Earth Clan? It might be Earth Clan. Um,. But it's also a subject matter that I'm fascinated by. It's about a uh, an alien civilization that uplifts other uh, a other alien races into a higher like sentience, basically. And they uplift uh, humans alongside dolphins and uh, and chips. Um, and I love books that look at uh, the human animal relationship. Particularly in fact, with the fiction, I think it is a fascinating, fascinating subject. Um, and so because of that, I very much want to read this. This one is really, really recent. And I actually did start reading this back in 2021, I think. Um, when was this released? I think it's 2021. And I never finished it. So, and I, I did enjoy it. So, I'm hoping to continue this, and that is, uh, To Sleep and See of Stars, written by, uh, Christopher Paglioni. I never did read his, uh, his, uh, books, the, the Aragon books. I think it's Inheritance Cycle? Um, again, that's, that's in here. Here we go. No, that's... That's the chapters. I don't remember. See, there's them in the back? Yep, Inheritance Cycle. I need to trust my own memory. But I really liked what I read of it, so I want to continue that. I also have really enjoyed, through New World's Never this year, getting acquainted with an author whose work I had never read before, but who have absolutely loved, and that is Clifford E. Simic. Uh, and so in the new year, I'm hoping to read some more of his stuff, starting, perhaps, with this city, which is a, a bind-up novel of some of his stories, two of which I've already read. Those two are, um, Desertion, and, um, I think it's Huddling Place. Um... Uh, and also, this just came in today, and I absolutely love this cover. It's a very, very pretty book. It's very cool. Again, uh, this, uh, I forgot the wrong one for this one. Uh, one of the many books that I kind of inherited from my father was, uh, these, the, uh, the Barsoon novels. 
And I know that Michael K. Vaughn will be doing a deep dive into him at Rice Rolls in the new year. And I would like to also read these for the first time, because I've never read uh, Edgar Rice Burroughs, so hoping to read the uh, the Barsoon novel, uh, the Barsoon series in the New World. Now this is probably the author here who I have the most experience with. Uh, this book is actually not what I'll be reading, because I've read everything in this next book, and loved so much of it. I absolutely love this author. He is right now my favorite science fiction author. I, I think of everyone else I've mentioned so far, um, Clifford E. Semic is probably the one that would be most likely to, uh, to supplant him. I like his themes he deals with. I like the psychological nuance he plays around with and the way he writes about non-human perspective particularly through his animals. And I know from talking with Sean D. Sandfast that a lot of that seems to be in his, his stories. But for right now, my favorite is Cord Winnesmith. I have gushed about this, this, his stories on this channel. I've gushed about it in our New World Center Voxer group, and I've gushed about it right one-on-one -on -one in other Voxers. Particularly with Scott uh, Bryant, who recently bought a, uh, a a big lovely copy of The Rediscovery of Man, which has his complete short science fiction. Um, and I'm happy. I'm also jealous because I don't have that yet. Uh, it was put out by NEPSA, the Norse, uh, oh, New England uh, Science Fiction Association. I'm hoping to get that this uh, this Christmas, either from Santa, or if I've asked for it from a few different Santas, or uh, buying it around Christmas time, after Christmas. Um, it's probably the top of my list for what I want to read. I really want to read the remainder of his fiction, and luckily that's not a hard thing to do. The North, I keep saying North, uh, the New England Science Fiction Association has two volumes by him. One is The Rediscovery of Man, which collects all of his short, I don't know if it's all of his short science fiction or all of his science fiction in the Human Instrumentality series. Instrumentality of Mankind, sorry. The human Instrumentality is from uh, Neon Genesis Evangelion. Um... But most of his short science fiction is in the Human Instrumentality universe, so... Oh god, the Instrumentality of Mark Mankind universe. Um, the other volume is Nostrilia. Nostrilia is a, uh, uh, essentially a, uh, a smushing together of the words Norse Australia. <laughs> A planet that is named after Australia. Uh, of course. And I love Crowman Smith because of his uh, his mythological fairy tale esque writing and because of the way he deals with social and moral issues. Uh, and I just want to show off that cover. That is so beautiful. So, so cool. The Legionnaires, which you'll realize in some of the stories, are essentially like. AI. You can get the the cat and the under people. And I'm pretty sure actually now that I'm looking at this, I, I I'm realizing who most of these individuals probably are. I'm pretty sure that's uh Odin, one of the lords of instrumentality. Oh, and there's another... Oh, that's so cool. One of these has got to be Kamel. But I'm not... My guess is that's Kamel right there. But I'm not certain. 
Okay, I'm getting that. I'm getting uh, sidetracked because I'm just analyzing this cover. Yeah, even once I get that uh, Rediscovery of Man volume, I'm definitely going to keep this because I just love it so much. Now, the final thing I'm going to read is something that I might be reading in the new year with someone else. Uh, another booktuber has uh, has shown interest in reading this. At least two people have shown interest in reading this, but one of them doesn't already own it. And I got it really cheap on Amazon at the time, but now it's like 80 bucks. Uh, so I don't know how lucky that would be if he'd ever be able to get it. The other one does own it though, and so if you're watching this... I can't wink, I'm really bad at winking. I also can't whistle, I'll let you know that. But that is this big, big edition of Nausicaa, Valley of the Wind, which I am going to label as science fiction. It's set in a post apocalyptic world with doomsday device, I guess you can call them AI, uh, and mutated bugs, so I'm going to call it science fiction. It's definitely speculative fiction, though. And I absolutely love the movie that this was made out of. Uh, it was made by Hayao Miyazaki uh, of Studio Ghibli Film. And uh, it follows Novika, who is trying to save her, her, uh, her home. And there's a war about to brew, but she's trying to do it without causing any violence. And while protecting the wildlife of the world. And again, this this feeds into that same theme that I love so much, where it pay attention to non-human intelligence in the form of the giant uh, Omo bugs. Um, but yeah, again, very high priority for me that I get to read this. I also want to show off this beautiful, beautiful poster that comes with the Nausicaa edition. Oh, uh, there's Nausicaa herself with her, uh, I don't remember what the, uh, fox squirrel is called. But, uh, presumably, I heard that the, the movie only, only actually adapts a small about, bit of it because Hayao Miyazaki actually was not finished with the story when he made the movie. But this is the full thing. So yeah. That is everything I want to show. Probably at the top of the, my list at the moment is uh, Nalika and the complete works of Corwin Smith, both in North in Australia and um, and uh, the rediscovery of Van. I think that's everything. So. Uh, there are some other things I would like to read. This is just the most basic stuff. And obviously there's some stuff that's left out. Uh, but just because I didn't mention it here doesn't mean I'm not going to read it. For instance, I don't particularly have as much interest in reading uh, Isaac Asimov at the moment. It's not that I don't want to read him at all, it's just he's not at the top of my list. Uh, or another one would be like George Orwell's 1984. I may still read them in the future though. Or in the new year. Uh, but this is just a very basic list. So yeah, if you're watching this, what do you think? What do you think of this list? What do you Have you read any of these? What are you hoping to read in the new year? Science fiction or otherwise? Uh, my new year will be packed. And I'm so very happy for that. So yeah. Bye booktube.